Now, Mr. Speaker, this time last week, the Prime Minister had to correct the record on misleading claims he made about employment numbers. Can he provide a further update? Now he's cost a thousand Tory councillors their jobs. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mr. Speaker, let me pass on my best wishes to May as well for this weekend Eurovision. Uh, with regard to the local elections, Mr. Speaker, maybe I can just offer the honourable gentleman a tiny bit of advice from one of his predecessors. From one of one, one of his predecessors, one of one of his predecessors, Tony Blair, who I was reading the other day. T- what did Tony Blair? He said he said the right honourable gentleman can be as cocky as he likes about the local elections. Come a general election, policy counts. And, and we know, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, the, the, the problem for him is he doesn't have any. The Prime Minister said he was going to lose a thousand seats, and then he managed it. After 13 years, a Tory promise they actually haven't broken. And this is the Prime Minister who's only had to fight for two things in his life. Last year, he lost a Tory beauty contest to the member for South West Norfolk, who then lost to a lettuce. Last week, when he finally came into contact with voters, he lost everywhere. No matter who the electorate is, the Prime Minister keeps entering a two-horse race and somehow finishing third. (laughs) Given his track record, who does he think he's actually got a mandate from? <laughs> Mr. Mr Speaker, it's a bit rich to hear about mandates from the person who's broken every single promise he was elected on. I mean, go through the list, Mr Speaker. Nationalisations, NHS outsourcing, universal credit and now tuition fees. He was, Mr Speaker, he was for them all before he was against them. He's not, he's not just the softy, he's the flaky too.